Hey everybody, it's Kent. Tonight I am showing off some of my favorite leather bindings. Uh, I do have a few road trips planned to go to different bookstores again, so hopefully there'll be some more book buying adventures coming up here in the next few weeks. Um, so let's get to it. Um, first I have a two volume set of uh, Walton's Angler and Walter's Lives. Really, really nice leather binding on that one. Look, you got the fish and the creels. Absolutely beautiful bindings. Really great condition. Let's see, we got the complete angler of Isaac Walton and Charles Cotton. Oh, this one's illustrated, published in 1823. Uh, this one actually came from uh, Dennis Melhouse. He owns First Folio Books, I think out of Tennessee. Um, he just has absolutely top-notch uh, leather bindings and stuff like that. Really, really, really high-quality books. I got this um, at the book fair last year from him. And again, absolutely stunning bindings and uh, near-fine condition. I really don't like using that word near-fine, but I would say those are near-fine. Next, we got Elf, uh, Alphabets by Edward F. Strange. And again, a really pretty, um, I don't know if you call this an arts and crafts style or Art Nouveau. But a very unique and very beautiful binding. And actually, this binding is signed in the back. I think that's the bookbinder's um, signature there, MC. Haven't I haven't been able to figure out um, who exactly MC is, but it is a really um, fantastic finding on this one, and an interesting topic as well. We got Alphabets, a handbook of lettering with historical, critical, and practical descriptions by Edward F. Strange, uh, published in 1895. This is a limited edition. Um, Number 73 of 75 copies printed. Show you some of the alphabet illustrations in this one. This one has um, many, many different illustrations of different typesets. Most of these I haven't got to listing online. I guess they are for sale. Um, but they're some of my favorites, so the prices uh, might be a little shocking. But they are for sale for the right price. Most of you probably know I'm eBay seller Animal at 52. I auction off 30 books every day, so you can always find lots of interesting books on my eBay page. They all start at 99 cents plus shipping, no reserves. So you might get your uh, might get some deals. I always have um, a nice selection of medical books, um, books on American history and ancient history, um, science, philosophy, religion, farming, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And again, what a binding on that one! Very nice. Uh, next, we have a copy of Museum of Antiquity. This is one of my favorite um, books on ancient history. So this is the full leather uh, binding. There's also a three-quarter leather binding. Um, there's also a cloth binding. Um, so this is obviously the most sought after, the full leather. Um, you used to be able to, I mean, just a few years ago, you used to be able to buy nice copies of this for like 100 bucks. Now, it's tough to find one for less than 200 Um see some people asking you know 300 plus um i've seen some copies of this sell on ebay for over a thousand bucks which is a little crazy but um i guess it's up to the customer uh, museum of antiquity a description of ancient life the employments amusements customs and habits the city's palaces monuments and tombs the literature and fine arts of three thousand years ago by l w yagi and t l haynes um, I think this one has over 200 illustrations. This is published in 1885. 
see if I can show you. It has, I mean, just everything on customs and culture. Um, there's an illustration of a gladiator fight or someone being wheeled out of a gladiator fight. Lots of stuff on mythology and religion. Um, art. Science. Um, there's some stuff in the back on the, the ancient pyramids in Egypt and hieroglyphics and mummies. There you got a statue of Augustus Caesar. Here we got catacombs, we got mummies. There's some really cool sarcophagus illustrations. Also some stuff on the Bible. Uh, there's a nice um, section on different myths and legends. Ancient gods, that kind of stuff. Again, one of my favorite books on ancient history and nice full leather copy of it. Uh, next, we got a copy of Ingoldsby Legends by Thomas Ingoldsby, illustrated by Arthur Rackham. Really nice leather binding. This one's, um, you could probably find multiple copies of this book with a nice binding. Um, one in this good condition is probably going to be about 300 bucks, but you could probably find one that's not quite as nice for much less, depending on what your budget is. The Ingoldsby Legends or Mirth and Marvels by Thomas Ingoldsby, illustrated by Arthur Rackham. This one's published in 1930. A lot of interesting stories on ghosts and witches. And There we go. We got the Witches Frolic. Looks like you got a book about fairies. Or is that, are those, is that a mermaid? No, it looks like mermaids, I think. Yeah, kind of a lot of wonky stuff with cemeteries and the devil. Oh, there looks like you got the story of the peacock pie. Oh, there's one of the Rackham illustrations. Nice, pretty binding. You got the witch and the devil on the spine. Uh, this is one of my favorite books. This is a copy of uh, Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Uh, the binding by the Monastery Hill Bindery. There you got Scrooge on the front cover holding his bag of money. And this one's illustrated by Arthur Rackham. That's another plus. Uh, where's the signature? I know there's this. Yep, there you go. There's the... Uh, binder signature show you some of the illustrations this one I actually bought from um, it was at the book fair last year I bought from um, Midway used in rare books they had this one at their booth if you remember one of my previous videos here a couple months ago I went and um, visited their store for the first time and bought a ton of really, really, really great stuff. Show you a few of the illustrations in this one. Rackham has a very um, unique illustrating style, very, um, muted colors kind of dark and gray nothing too bright but I think he is one of the book collectors favorites again I just really like the binding and even the silk end papers and the holly the little details make this binding a little extra special up next, we have Arthur Rackham Fairy Book. A 
Nice full leather, really nice condition. Uh, that one's bound by uh, Bantam. See the signature right there. The Arthur Rackham Fairy Book, a book of old favorites with new illustrations. Copy or first published in 1933. Show you some more Rackham illustrations. Again, very muted colors. Not my favorite uh, illustrator, but he is many people's favorite. Oh, got the three bears, it looks like. The three bears. Once upon a time, there was three bears who lived together in a house of their own in the woods. One of them was a, a little small wee bear. One was a middle-sized bear, and the other was a great huge bear. They each had one pot for porridge, a little pot, uh, a little pot for the little small wee bear, a middle-sized pot for the middle bear, and a great pot for the great huge bear. And they had each a chair to sit in, a little chair for the little wee bear, a middle-sized chair for the middle bear, and a great huge chair for the great huge bear. And they each had a bed to sleep in, a little wee bed for the small wee bear, and a mid middle-sized bed for the middle bear, and a great bed for the great huge bear. Classic story. I don't know if there's anyone out there that doesn't know the story of the Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Guess my hands are a little sweaty. Up next, we got another fairy book illustrated by Arthur Rackham. Nice, pretty leather binding on that one. Nice purple leather, again with the silk end papers. Uh, this one's bound by um, Sandorsky and Sutcliffe. They do a fantastic job with leather bindings. A fairy book illustrated by Arthur Rackham, published in 1923. Show you a few more of his illustrations. Oh, I do not know that story of the... Looks like a two-headed giant. Huh, I don't know what story that would be. Oh, there you got another giant. Sleeping Beauty, perhaps. Take a look. Yep, Sleeping Beauty. Once upon a time, there lived a king and queen who were in great trouble because they had no children. They were sorrier about it, uh, it than words can tell. They offered us prayers, made vows and pilgrimages, moves heaven and earth, and for a long time it seemed to be no use. At last, however... Their wish was granted, and the queen became the mother of a baby girl. Such a fine christening was never seen before. All the fairies who could be found in the country, there were seven of them, were invited as godmothers of the little princess. As each one was bound to bring a fairy gift, this being the custom with the fairies of those times, it stood to reason that the princess would, be, would have everything you could think of to make her perfectly good and beautiful and happy. Another classic. Hmm, not sure what story that is. Looks pretty exciting though. Oh, it's quite scary. Gosh, especially for a children's fairy tale gosh I don't know if these illustrations are overly suitable for children <laughs> I guess uh, up next we got illustrations of truth a nice full leather binding on that one and I think this is one of the few books this is called Gofford edges um, where they apply a texture to the gilded page edges There are people out there that just collect books with uh, the Gofford edges. We got Truths Illustrated by great, uh, great Authors, a dictionary of nearly 4,000 aids to reflection, quotations of maxims, metaphors, counsels, cautions, amorph amorphis amorphisms, proverbs, etc., etc., in prose and verse. 
compiled from Shakespeare, published in 1859. See what Shakespeare has to say about bashfulness. As those that pull down private houses adjoining to the temples of the gods prop up such parts are contiguous to them, so in undermining bashfulness, due regard is to be had to adjacent modesty, good nature, and humanity. Good words from Shakespeare. Let's see. Love. Love is life and... Oh, no, that's by Spencer. Uh, love is life and at end but never ending. All joys, all sweets, all happiness awarding. Love is life's wealth, never spent but never spending. More rich by giving, taking by discarding. Love's life reward, rewarded in rewarding. Then from thy wretched heart, fond care remove. Ah, shalt li thou, thou live by once love sweet to prove. Thou wilt not love to live unless thou live, live to love. Definitely just butchered the heck out of that one. Not a big poetry reader. Uh, here we have a two-volume set of familiar studies by Robert Louis Stevenson. Um... Definitely not the most exciting book, but I do like the binding. Cute little row of flowers. Rows of flowers. Again, kind of not a overly exciting book. Let's see if that one is signed. Nope, I don't see a bookbinder signature on that one. Familiar Studies of Men and Books by Robert Louis Stevenson in two volumes, published in 1904. Not very exciting except for the binding. Content one, contents of volume one contains Victor Hugo's romances, some aspects of Robert Burns, Walt Whitman, Henry David Thoreau, his character and opinions, and Yoshida Torajiro. See what volume two is about. Francois Villon, student poet and housebreaker, Charles of Orleans, Samuel Pepys, John Knox and his relations to women. Oh, the con the controversy about female rule and private life. Interesting, and again, pretty low binding. On uh, one of my last videos, I wanted to show you um, a prize binding, but the book plate was missing inside, so I found another prize binding here you got the um school insignia on the front cover then the book plate inside the front cover aline's grammar school uh this was a prize for general work form two presented to the student was w wood july 1896 and then the headmaster j f Atkinson. Popular Lectures and Addresses by William Thompson. Uh, this is Volume 1, consisting of The Constitution of Matter, published in 1891. So I would assume it's just a book on science and chemistry and physics, that kind of stuff. Not too many illustrated. I thought it said it was illustrated. I guess not very excitingly illustrated. That's quite the physics contraption. But again, a nice, um, pretty binding, marbled edges. And again, that is a prize binding. You got another prize binding here. Here we got the city of uh, Berkhamham Mun Municipal Technical Day School. Uh, this was a prize for science awarded to, well, I guess we'll never know who that one was awarded to. And again, you got the signature of the um, headmaster. Looks like Lionel M. Jones, July 24th, 1902. Again, nice marbled uh, page edges and end papers. From Franklin to Nansen, Tales of Arctic Travel, retold by G. Firth Scott, illustrated 1902. Got that frontispiece map on this one. I thought there might have been another map. Could be wrong. It's 
been a while since I've seen a few of these books. A Storm in the Arctic Seas. Again, pretty prize binding. Another pretty leather binding. Looks like we got Goldsmith's Poetical Works. Pretty details on that one. See if that binding is signed. Nope, I don't see a binder signature anywhere on that one. The poetical works of Oliver Goldsmith, illustrated. No date, but I would guess that one's from the 1860s. What do you got here? They talked of their Raphael's, Corey Goalies, and stuff. He shifted his trumpet and only took snuff. Oh. Again, yeah, nice binding. Like that one. All right, here we got two volumes. Uh, set of Christmas stories and Christmas books by Charles Dickens. Nice. I really, man, check out the marbled edges and end papers. Always like how nicely they match up there. I mean, just absolutely perfect. And these are pretty early for um, Dickens' Christmas. Uh, Christmas Carol in Prose, The Chimes and the Cricket on Hearth by Charles Dickens, uh, published in 1848. Um, so this one was actually published in Germany, um, but it is in English. Don't think there's any illustrations, but that's okay, being such early Dickens. And then this is The Battle of Life and the Haunted Man, published in 1856. Yep, that one just has the two stories by Dickens. Again, nice old leather binding on that one. Uh, I know I've shown this one off a lot, but it is a beautiful two-volume set of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll. Got the rabbit on the front of Alice, and then you got the Red Queen on the front of Through the Looking Glass, and again... Just absolutely top-notch condition on that set. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll, published in 1929. Through the Looking Glass was also published in 1929. Those are some of my favorites. I see people um, with sets like these online asking... You know, usually anywhere from 750 to up to 1250 bucks. Um, I think I definitely paid a lot less than that. I got lucky on an eBay auction. Uh, this is another one of my favorite bindings. Um, another Complete Angler by Isaac Walton and Mr. Cotton. Uh, published in 1889. Again, you got that beautiful Art Nouveau design on the front cover and rear cover. This one actually came from... Um, Phil, the book peddler. Uh, you can find him on eBay and YouTube, probably Facebook and Instagram and all that other stuff. The book peddler, he has a bookstore in New York. I think he posted this one on his, uh, was it his Instagram or eBay maybe? And I reached out to him, got it bought. Um, it is bound by Revere and Son. There's the signature right there. Got the fish and the creels. And I just... Really love that design on the front and rear cover. Pretty special. The Complete Angler or Complentative, com, Complentative, com, Complentative, Complentative, Man's re, uh, Recreation uh, of Isaac Walton and Charles Cotton, edited by John Major. This one's illustrated. 
Um, looks like it has eight plates and 74 in text illustrations, published in 1889. And again, absolutely fantastic binding on that one. All right, well, if you made it this far into the video, I really appreciate it. Feel free to hit that like button. Um, leave a comment down below if you appreciate it. Whoa, looks like we got a fisher or a mink eating a fish. All right, well, that is uh, all for now. Thank you so much for watching.